Chuck over here. Thank you. I am, I've written my thoughts down just so that I can be speaking. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank you, Chief Mike Johnson, for all the time and support you spent getting me up to speed. Thank you especially for organizing this important event today for all of us. Thank you to everyone in the community, especially Marcy Powers and Laura Bauman, who helped to round up all these great speakers who are on the front lines to help us create a fire resilient community in our very vulnerable wildland urban interface. Not to mention all the vendors and businesses who have generously donated door prizes in their time. I'm really proud of the huge turnout today and all that you're helping to do to protect our homes and community. We got through a very tough winter, well, almost. <laughs> Still hold on, the fire season will be here quickly enough. We were lucky last year, this year it will be different. We are so lucky to live surrounded by a national forest, a state park, and thousands of acres of private land owned by Sierra Pacific Industries and our own forests around our homes. But there's a good reason Cal Fire put all the communities in our district from Murphy's to Arnold and up to Camp Connell on this list of communities most vulnerable. It's imperative we pull out all the stops to prevent Greater Arnold and Murphy's from becoming a catastrophic, a catastrophic statistic. I've seen a lot of our constituents working to create a defensible space around their homes. If you still have brush to clear, I encourage you to take advantage of the free door-to-door -door chipper program administered by Calaveras Foothills Fire Safe Council. I have, in fact, the chipper comes to me on Monday morning, and I'll be helping to chip and clearing that I have done. All you have to do is drive the brush and tree limbs to the side of the road and a contractor will come by to chip them and leave the chips behind for you to use. You can get applications at the Fire Safety Council table there in the back. We've all read about the devastating fires of the past three years. They destroyed, they destroyed so many lives and livelihoods and our beloved forests. Earlier this month, I met with a fire scientist at the UC Berkeley Fire Lab, Lexi Bernal. She told me that she and other researchers have confirmed that in the past three years, we've lost more than 20% of California's, which is the world's, giant sequoias to wildfire. That's 20%. Big trees with more than a thousand giant sequoias is the economic backbone to our county. I'm glad we have Heather Reese uh, here, a head of natural resources for the park, to tell us about the efforts to protect big trees from catastrophic fire. You'll also hear, hear from a well-respected forestry expert who has forged strong partnerships with the Forest Service, BLM, and CAL FIRE and helped build a strategic defense system of landscape-scale fuel breaks from Murphy's to Camp Connell. 10,000 acres of fuel breaks. That's 1,000 football fields. All done with grants written and executed by a small but mighty all-volunteer team, the CALAM forestry team led by Pat McGreevy, you're remarkable. I was just talking to Pat uh, just a couple of minutes ago, and he reckons it's nine grants and just over six and a half million dollars that he's raised just for our project. Thank you. Thank you. The main message I'd like to give today is to be prepared. I went to a boarding school, and I was a prefect in my dormitory. We did fire drills every month, and we hated it. <laughs> One morning at 5.30 a.m., the alarm went off, and we groaned at the thought of another drill. All 75 students were out of the building in two and a half minutes. In five minutes, there was nothing left of the four-story structure. This impression has never left me, and I'll be working on how we, as a community, can be doing our own drills and making sure that we are prepared, because these things happen when you least expect it. I urge everyone here today to continue to work together to make the difference. Let's look at our work patterns, new technologies, new equipment, and policy to see if there might be a better way to work together. Lastly, I want to remind everyone to protect your homes from the danger of embers. So many examples over the past few years of fires that burned down homes but left trees standing. This is your cue, Mike. All right. So Marcy Powers pulled these slides together, and what, what this is to show you is how all the houses are going, are gone, but the trees are still standing. And the reason for that, or our main reason for that, is embers. Here you can see that the barn is gone, but the house which they take care of isn't.
So I learned this when I hired the wild, Wildfire Safety Solutions to do a report of my home. I hadn't even thought of this. Embers can travel up to five miles. Some say one or two. Google says five. Yeah. What's the truth, Mike? <laughs> I'd say yeah. I wouldn't even put a limit on it. Don't put a limit on it, sorry. <laughs> and they build up in places you wouldn't think of. It's important to cover every possible entry into your homes with a one eight, one eight inch mesh. Uh, again, I had no idea that, the, that embers, what it is is the embers collect and they find corners to collect and it's when they collect that, that they can create the fire. Uh, now, I'd like to introduce you to John Parks. John Parks will be speaking about his new role with the county, your homes, and of course, how this all relates to wildfire. Thank you so much. Also, can I say, I, I really don't monitor uh, Facebook and, and social media on a regular basis. I love my business cards. If you have any issues or you want to reach me directly, please reach out directly. My phone number's on there and my email. So thank you.